Hello, I'm Eileen Roach, and I'm delighted to welcome you to today's episode of Between Friends. We've been decorating here at Dime, like I imagine many of you are at home also, and I have to give a big shout out and a thank you to my uh, teammates, Gloria Cardoza and Noda Robertson for making this look so festive. It's been a lot of fun getting ready for the holidays here. And I see many of you are joining in. Risa Ranke, great, great to have you here up there from uh, Wyoming where it's snowing. And what you said, Risa, I'm trying to find your comment, but you love freestanding lace because it doesn't pucker. Well, that's a great reason to love freestanding lace. I love that. And hello to uh, my friend, John Chase from Virginia, uh, she's the owner of Creative Applicates. Great to have her here. You're gonna be meeting her uh, in 2024. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we're saying that already, right? And Marjorie Hirschberger, welcome from cold and sunny Lancaster. Um, and Ann Philbeck, you've been, you're in Virginia and you've been waiting all day, waiting for what? Snow, waiting for Facebook Live, what? It's just great to have everybody here. Let's see, um, okay. I am so excited to welcome uh, my good friend, Sue Brown from OML Embroidery. She's joining us today live from Canada. So let's go ahead and welcome in Sue. Hi, Eileen. Love your uh, hat, Sue. Everybody do love Sue's hat. Isn't that great? She it it has Sue. bells. I don't know if you can hear them, but <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so you know, cute. It's, so it's different. Elf hat, elf feet, right? Yep. Why not? Everyone's yeah. like, cute hat, cute hat. Yes. Oh, it's awesome. It's oh, awesome. So this is a family tradition for you, These the, a fun holiday hat, right? We do. We buy one every year. And okay. now we have 25 of them. So we switch them back and forth. So everybody uh, has a different hat to wear. So yeah. it was a lot more fun when the girls were in school. But, you know, mm. we wear a different hat. It's just, and you get funny ones. You get traditional ones. It's just fun. Fun so hat. Five. Like what you I think you said earlier you have a leopard one, is that right? Yeah, leopard print one and a baseball hat one and a really long one. Yeah, anything you anytime I see it, I just grab it and we add it to our stash. It's just part of our Christmas fun. Yeah. Silly. So, you know, a hundred years ago when I was in college, we used to have hat parties. Does anybody remember that? They were some kind of crazy drinking thing, I'm sure. But anyway, I do remember lots of hat parties and, you know, same idea, crazy hats. It's just fun. I like yeah. to have fun and no matter what I do, I mm -hmm. should probably embroider my name or something. Yeah, on it, but... that would be fun. That yes. would be fun. Okay. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, so, you know, it's time to really talk about decorating for the holidays. And one of the really fun things to do is to, you know, um, add little charms to either Christmas trees or as a gift wrap, right? To kind of elevate your gift wrap with a 3D dimension, like an embroidered charm. And then it can double as a Christmas tree ornament, right? Those are absolutely beautiful. I think if you went anywhere with those presence like yeah. that that people would be how'd you do that right it, yeah they would just kind of be memorized you know it, we get a little jaded shall i say right so we're, we've been around embroidery an awful lot and um but those who don't embroider are so impressed with this kind of touch oh yeah especially lace well everyone knows how i feel about freestanding <laughs> lace my lace maker is my favorite thing that has ever been created i love it so That's doing awesome. lace it just makes me happy it's easy you can yeah. watch your machine stitch. There's never right. any problems. Yeah, it's very forgiving, right? Very, very forgiving. Yeah, so great for beginners, 
and really wonderful for those that are more advanced. And, you know, like if you have, if you have two machines, you know, one can be stitching lace and you could be sewing, putting on binding, you know, making a stocking, whatever it is that you're doing, right? Um, and you can just let that lace run. That's kind of what I like about it. You really don't have to mess with it. Definitely. Me too. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So, of course, today we have um, a special collection and, you know, we introduced it here in October because it was it's our holiday lace charms collection and it also has some you know Halloween and Thanksgiving charms but it has an awful lot of Christmas and snowflakes wintery things like mittens and the and the cap and a little Santa gnome I love the sweater and yeah. the present I know I I, and I neglected to include that stitch out today but it is so cute and you could have a lot of fun with the colors on the argyle a segment a section in the center, right? Super fun. And Christmas then, of course, tree. some real traditional elements like a Christmas tree, the holly leaves, a stocking, snowman, a star of David. And of course, that deer, he's, he's stitched in black in that image, but he looks gorgeous in King Star gold. And I have a sample of that to show you in a while. Wonderful. So, um, Let's see. And it's on special this week. It's an instant download. Now there's an error in my PowerPoint that should be $39.99. You know, that extra N nine flipped down to the next line and we scrambled at the last minute to try to correct it. But anyway, you'll forgive me. It's $39.99. And the best part about it is it's an instant download. So if you if you order it now, you'll receive an email with a link to download it and you can be stitching in about five minutes, right? How many designs yeah. are included in it? I think it, it looks oh. like 27 because yeah. that's a pretty good deal for yeah. freestanding, so many freestanding lace designs. Yeah. That's and, awesome. And they come with an eyelet and without. So you really get 54 designs. Oh, even better. That's, yeah, because sometimes awesome. you don't want that eyelet, you know. Um, and sometimes it's really quite handy. But, you know, Sue, when uh, my good friend Ashley Jones, I mean, she has uh, kind of shared with us that many people often worry about using a snap hoop monster for stitching freestanding lace because um, the stabilizer can kind of creep if you, if you have a lot of lace designs in a hoop, not so much in a four by four, but maybe in a, in a larger hoop. So we pin, we just place straight pins outside of the hoop, right at the edge there. And that keeps the stabilizer in position and it doesn't creep into the design. And, and what would happen if it did? Well, occasionally you would have a registration, an outline of the design that wouldn't line up with the body of the design. And that's what we don't want. So the charms, Kathy Beck wants to know what size are the charms? Um, I believe they're uh, one and a half inches tall, but I can confirm that they, well, they're two inches. They're, they're approximately two inches, but you get them, it, you know, when you purchase them, you're going to get all the formats that you need, but you will also receive the C2S format, which is our native format. And you can download our free sizing software, Embroidery Toolshed, and then you have the freedom to resize those charms quite a bit. You know, now you don't want to shrink them down much more. You could go down to about an inch and a half, but not any smaller than that, because then your satins are going to get too narrow. But you most certainly can make them um, larger. And I have some samples that, that I'll show you in a little bit. So anyway, yeah, super fun. So what do you do once you get them stitched, then it's time to rinse? Well, you know, a couple weeks ago, I went, I, I showed in detail the difference in the water temperature that you use in, in the results of the rinsing, right? So why don't we take a look at that? Okay, Sue? Yeah, absolutely. It's important. It makes a big difference. It does. And, you know, many My people leaves. aren't really aware of it. So let's take a look. My holly leaves. And, you know, it's good to trim right next to them because you want to dissolve as little as possible. And I'll also tell you that if you uh, hold on to this excess stabilizer, we're gonna have a pretty large piece, albeit with a hole in the center, 
from where we cut out this lace, but you can use this to add rigidity to some lace that maybe you uh, rinsed too hot, right? And then it's too weak. So we're going to just slice them all apart. And I'll show you first in a bowl of water that's just kind of uh, right out of the tap, just room temperature. So I have my little gun, my little temperature gun. So let's go ahead and see what that temperature is. So it's 71 degrees, right? Not very warm at all. And so when I put it in there, it does not really want to dissolve. So you can still see the film is here, right? You can see that film is still there. That's all right. We'll leave it in there for a little bit and uh, we'll let that just soak for a minute. And I'm going to go get my totally tubular station so I can get up a little closer for you so you can get a better look at the rinsing. Because when we get that hot water in there, it's going to go away so fast. Wait do you see. So there we go. So as you can see, now it's starting to come apart, right? And I can actually pull that away so that it's all gone. I could brush it with my fingers or just let it sit a little longer. And now it has dissolved. So when I dry this, because it was in cold water, it's gonna be very stiff. And sometimes that's desirable, right? So place that on a, on a paper towel or on a uh, terry cloth, well, not terry cloth, because that has a little too many uh, fibers but like a linen towel would, would work well. All right, so that was my tap water, you know, uh, room temperature. So now I have water that I've heated up in an electric kettle and we'll pour that in there. And so you can see the steam coming off, right? Can you see that steam? It's hot, it's really hot. So let's see how hot it is. So um, that's 187 degrees, so that's pretty hot. So now I'm going to take one of my, the other holly leaf and look, gone instantly, totally gone. Can you see that? Isn't that amazing? Just by temperature. And now if I want the rigidity, I would leave it just like that. But if I really wanted to be loose, like if it's a, something I'm putting on a garment and I want it to be really drapey, then I would just, you know, continue to let it sit and then it's then you can shape it well you can also shape the others these you can shape these two out uh, and they'll dry in that form so that that's all you got to do is just go ahead and dip that in there i love it it's so much fun of course now it's in really hot water so we need to get some tweezers to pull that out that's probably the best way to do it or just let it soak a little bit super easy huh sue I love that with the yeah. hot water. It just makes it even more fun. Another reason to love lace. All right. And when you're doing garments, you know, I mean, not that, well, maybe you would put holly all across, you know, a bodice or something, but it really is um, so easy, you know, to make it fluid by using that hot water to uh, rinse it away. And, Saves a you lot know, of you time. Can to, yeah. You can go over 300 and I think 40 degrees, maybe it's even a little higher, but you know, not that we need to do that, but that's when polyester begins to melt. It might be like 380. So let's see. Um, my friend Kelly wanted to know, do I use the 60 weight fine line thread to stitch these charms? And <clears throat> that's a good question because they are small designs, but they've been digitized for 40 weight exquisite thread, which is the traditional weight of embroidery uh, polyester thread, so. And you can also use the metallic thread in the bobbin and on top, King Star metallic only. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you can have it on the back and on the front. Right. So, because a lot of people ask me that, can you wind King Star in the bottom? Yes, you mm -hmm. can. Just sure. the same. Yeah, just Absolutely. the same. Absolutely. So let's see. So I well, just a shout out to Aretha Ranke because she said she learned the hard way not to put it on terry cloth, cloth towel. So, you know, have you ever done that, Sue? I know I have, you know, and yes, <laughs> yeah, the, the little yeah. charm sticks to the towel. It's very mm -hmm. hard to separate. And once you do, <laughs> your loops are pulled right out of the terry cloth nap. And yeah. it makes a rip noise. I usually hang mine up in the kitchen, mm -hmm. just by the kitchen window. Oh. I just yeah. hang them there. Okay. And 
then I don't have to worry about it. And if it drips, it drips into the sink. Right. I put it on a, a baker's rack. That's what I do. Like a Oh, a even better. Even yeah. better. And Anne Augustine said that she just made some objects with King Star, as I'm sure what she's referring to, in both the top thread and bottom. No breaks at all. I know. It is a great thread. But hey, let's go take a look at some of these uh, charms, right? So here we have uh, some stitched out that are just adorable. There's our holly. Wow. And of course, we have some packages. And I've added charms. I, I mean, rhinestones to some of them. Oh, that's a good idea for yeah. sure. Yeah, it really kind of livens it up, don't you think? Oh, you I know, think that makes it even better. Yeah, I know. That's so awesome. Are there yeah. any other like holidays? I think you mentioned that before, like oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. And... Yes, there are. So, oh. you know, there's those Halloween, which is your favorite holiday, I know, right? That's awesome. Aren't they yep, great? I love it. I love yes. it, especially mm -hmm. the spider web. Yeah, the spider web is great, just great. And the spider himself, like his, look at his legs. I mean, the digitizing on this is kind of amazing to me. You know, they keep their shape. And that's wow. tiny little narrow satins, but oh, and of course this leaf, I'm in love with that leaf. Really lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, so for those, you know, Halloween lovers, we have that. But let's go ahead and take a look at the holly and what we did with it. Well, one thing you could do, you could stitch the holly leaf without the eyelet and turn that into a pin. Just glue a pin back onto the um, leaves and then you're set. And then, you know, a little pillow box. These are lovely um, containers to give a gift card or maybe a small item. And we just tied the holly charm onto elastic cord you know, stretchy, and then just tied it around. And there you have it. It's really a nice decoration. But really you nice also decoration. do hair clips with the lace. Oh, I think they're just cool. about the right size. Yes, they wouldn't be too large, you know. Uh, and yeah, that's just a great idea, Sue. Really great idea. So let's see, Lynn O'Sullivan wants to know if you're going to attach them to a garment, do you use a machine or hand stitch? Um, well, that would, I guess, depend on where it is on the garment. You, of course, could just stitch the charm onto the garment, like, you know, hoop the garment and stitch it. You don't have to, but you could. Um, and, and would you use monofilament thread? You could use monofilament thread for sure. As I age, I find monofilament thread is harder and harder to see every year. <laughs> would you agree, Sue? 100%. I threw yes. all mine out because I can't thread mm -hmm. it and it just gets frustrating. Right. So, so what I would do, um, I would, you know, thread the machine in red thread, the same red as the berries or the green for the holly. And I would just stitch in uh, right in those berries and then it would match. And I wouldn't have to worry about that. You could put them on jeans too. Oh, yeah. I think that would be like Christmas jeans or yeah. you could even hand stitch one on a pocket so you don't close up the pocket. I think that would be cute. Yeah, super cute. Lots of fun ideas. Okay, so what else do we have? Well, we have um, a napkin ring. I want to show you that. Here it is. So this is, um, I stacked together three um, snowflakes. And now here's a really good example. So you can see how I resized them. So this is the original size that comes in the collection. And I made it larger and smaller. And then I stacked them together, just, you know, centered one on top of the other. And then I used silver thread to bar tack that together and stitched an elastic cord onto the back. And then there's my napkin ring. Now, if you don't have elastic cord, you could stitch that onto a ribbon and just tie it behind the napkin. You know, it doesn't have to be super complicated, but you could do a hoop of these and have four set, like 12, 12 of these um, snowflakes, right? Four of each size and have four full sets in one hooping. And oh my goodness, it's so fast, really fun and fast. That's so beautiful. Let's see. Um, okay, so Mary has a cute idea. She says, well, if you hand stitch these charms, you could change your pocket or jeans for each season. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was thinking. 
That, yeah. I think that would be so much fun. It would only take a minute to stitch it on with a little bit of thread. You can yeah, still use right. your embroidery oh. thread for that so it matches. Oh yeah, it just takes a moment. And let's see, Marina Vitali says, can you stitch them onto tennis shoes? Oh, super fun. At, Why not? You can attach them to tennis shoes. That's a cute idea. Yeah, like you could lace through the eyelets and just have them, you know, in the center of the laces, or you could tack them. If it's a cloth shoe, you, I would think you could hand tack them to a, uh, or just glue them. No one would. Yeah, or just glue, glue them. For I mean, sure. Yeah. yeah. And glue. We love glue. Right. And so let's see, Reen Wilcoxon are good from embroidery gardens. She says you can also put them on candles for sure. You could make like a collar of charms that goes around a candle. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Really Good mm -hmm. ideas. That's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see. April Taylor, she's from Australia. She wants to know, is the Charm Pack a standalone collection or do you need Lace Maker program? You do not need um, e any program. Just a, It's a standalone collection, $39.99 for all 27 designs in both formats with an eyelet and without. You can, uh, April, you could download our free software, which is Embroidery Toolshed, and that will allow you to resize these designs like I, I showed you with the snowflakes. And that's, a, you know, not, you don't even have to purchase it. It's just a, a download. And, and then use the C2S format, which is our native format, to resize and then save it in your machine format and send it to the machine. So yeah, super easy to do. Let's see. And Rita Ranke says that she loves making holiday earrings. They would be great for that. Well, that's what those snowflakes are. Let's see. Let me get that overhead cam. You can see right here, this is a uh, snowflake earring. And here's the little finding. Yeah, these are super cute. I have some earrings on today, but we'll talk about them at the end of the program. But yeah, there's just so much fun. The candy canes make great earrings. Even the little gift baskets make great, um, not gift baskets, gift boxes make great earrings. Okay, so let's see what else we have in store. Let me see where we are in PowerPoint. Oh, well, let's take a look at um, some of those bags that I have. So on this pretty bag, and it is a very pretty bag. Look, it's, you know, it's kind of one of the nicer ones that you find. It has a cloth, um, well, a, um, a corded handle, which is very nice, really pretty, uh, a print on it with a little metallic fleck. That gold is so nice. So I added that bells, that silver bells and gold bells, and I just put it on a, uh, folded over clip that would attach to the tree so that, you know, whoever receives this could then, you know, just attach it to their tree. I shortened it like that because, you know, we wanted it to fit on that um, bag easily. So there we go. We'll scooch that in and then I squeeze it so it stays in place and doesn't come loose. But that looks really nice on this bag. And that's about a five inch bag. And then I have an even smaller bag. Look how cute that is. Isn't that lovely? Oh, and again, love that. yeah, it's on a hook that you can use to go on the tree or not. And I added some rhinestones on that. It's super cute. As you can see, these are really, really fun. Now, let me give a shout out to um, Gloria and Noda, who has helped with all this packaging. And look at this adorable set. Uh, well, gift wrap. This is just brown craft paper. And, you know, Sue, so many times that we were out of gift wrap and maybe all we have is a shopping bag or a, uh, you know, brown craft paper at home. Well, it does make really elegant gift wrap, don't you think? I think that one is my favorite of all yeah. of them. Oh, um, I love because it. Because the background doesn't take away anything from the lace. And yeah. I think it's just beautiful. Plus, I love candy canes. Yeah, I like candy canes. So... Noda, we used Boker, uh, Baker's twine, and then um, we Noda attached the candy canes with slip knots so that you can actually rearrange them and move them as you see fit. You know, because sometimes it's challenging, right? On a on a when you're working on a long length of twine and you're trying to get your decoration centered properly, so these can actually slide until you're satisfied. And then, of course, we put 
the holly leaves in the center. And then this is just like a little uh, faux greenery sprig that, that we had. And uh, we used that to finish the embellishment. But super fun, super fun. Okay, let's see what is next. Well, I already showed you the, uh, let's go over to PowerPoint. And I showed you the pretty uh, gift wraps, but here is the elegant place setting with that napkin ring. And you know, it's just, just lifted a little bit, right? It's really yeah, nice. Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. But maybe my favorite is this one. And this is oh. a monogrammed stockings for a family. This is actually Keegan, Janelle and Emma, right? And this is, you know, mom, dad, and baby. And uh, when you send something like this in the mail, oh my goodness, isn't that so sweet? Cost you less than, you know, buying a Christmas card. And plus yeah. it's personal. You can't buy a Christmas card with initials on it. I yeah. absolutely love that idea. That's and beautiful. Yeah, so this is pretty easy to do too. So this, the stockings of course come from the Lace Holiday Lace Charm Collection. And then we also sell a font collection that is all micro fonts. So if you don't have any of our, like maybe Word Art and Stitches or Perfect Embroidery Pro, some of our more expensive software programs, you can just buy the micro font collection and it will install into Embroidery Toolshed and you'll get some pretty fabulous results. So I made a video for you so you could see how I did this. So let's go ahead and play that video. So embroidery uh, tool shed, and then with the purchase of the font collection, you'll see those 11 micro fonts are included. And once it's installed on your computer, you'll notice that there will be a check mark next to font two, if that's the only thing that you've purchased from Dime. And then of course, you'll need the collection of holiday lace charms and open the stocking and then click on the text icon and now you'll have access to all of those micro fonts, all 11. And in the properties box, you'll type in your initials and then move it over to the stocking. Now, it might be a little bit easier to change the color and I'm gonna go ahead and make that gold. I'm just, you know, clicking on the color chip allows me to select a new color. And now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see how I manipulate text. Now I want that text to be aligned with the bottom of the cuff, right? So I move the monogram down to the edge of the cuff, right in that position. And then I make sure it's perfectly aligned. And by doing it in that orientation, I can be assured that it's parallel with the bottom of the cuff. And then I center it in the cuff area. Once I'm satisfied, I select the whole thing and then I'll hit control C and control V on my keyboard. And then I move that off to the side and I'm, I have my second repeat. And now I'm just gonna change that first initial to JM because that's what I need for number two. And I'm gonna do copy and paste again. And now again, I'm only going to change the uh, initials E M and I'll click apply. And then I have my three stockings. How cute is that? And it's, I mean, it just took seconds. As you can see that video was what a minute. That's how long it took. Now I'm going to save that as stockings in the C2S format. And I do that so I can come back to it at any time and change those initials again. And once I save it, and I make sure I want to rename it because I want to keep my original stocking design. And now I'm going to save it again, save as in my machine format. So I'll use that drop down list to select whatever machine I'm going to stitch it on. And then I will send that design to the machine. And that's all you need to stitch. Isn't that fun? That is so fun. I love the micro fonts. They're the best small fonts that you can find. And a lot of people ask that, well, when I take the lettering and make it down small, it doesn't work. That mm -hmm. works. You could see how clear they are um, yeah. on, on the stitching. It's right. wonderful. And 
And they've been digitized specifically for that size. That's why they work. You cannot take a, you know, one and a half to a two inch letter and shrink it down to a quarter inch. It, you, it's impossible. I mean, you can do it, but it's not going to stitch pretty. Well, and you can't read it. That's, you know, it has to be readable. And those ones are perfectly clear. And remember, it's only two inches. So that's pretty yeah. small lettering. It is very small lettering. So really easy to do. So then how do you attach it to the card? Well, there's a number of ways, but I can tell you that you can just sew a line, right? Across in a kind of curved fashion across the top of the card, put a stabilizer inside the card. And then as you place each of the stockings uses a satin stitch, a zigzag, you know, a narrow zigzag with a very short stitch length so that you just get a solid column of satin stitches to grab that little opening on the stocking hook or, you know, loop, I guess we should say. And just repeat that for the three. If you remember, well, you always do um, the sew along of the projects on OML's YouTube channel, right? And so in June, we did something like this with onesies for It's a Girl and It's a Boy, remember? That was one of my favorites. Everybody loved that because it was so cute and so easy to do. Because you it look really at something was. like that and you think, oh, I can't do that. Oh, yeah. yes, you can. Yes, you yes can. I remember that. That's, yeah. That was awesome. So that was my inspiration for this, for sure. I okay, love so moving on from greeting cards, but what a lovely way. I mean, good, you know, if you have a big family, well, you know, you can make one hoop with like 12 stockings and, you know, you'll be done, right? Super fast. Awesome. Easier than writing it out. <laughs> yes. Right? Writing all the cards. This okay. is my favorite. Oh. Yeah. So... These ornaments, uh, we have two styles here. We have just a white disc that was purchased in a craft store. They now sell, you know, goodness, they sell everything, right? So this is just a, a two inch white circle, and maybe it's two and a half inches with a hole in it. And then we attached on the stocking, we didn't even attach the stocking to the wood. We just, cause it has its own little loop, we just used the hook to go all the way through. And then on the candy, canes we did glue them together and nice. the gingerbread man how cute is he huh Isn't i he love cute? it i love yeah, it so he's trapped into that um <laughs> how did you that do that container yeah well i'm going to show you i'm going to show oh, you okay. one more set so the snowman and he's super cute in a glass ball and again here's my holly now notice this time i didn't stitch the eyelet on the holly no we don't need it on in this application because i just used glue to attach it to those wood discs so let's go ahead over uh oh i guess i have one more there we're going to take a look at these two but notice how big that gingerbread man is and um he was resized so let's let me clean up this mess and i'll just show you first and maybe we can kind of get that side cam going there we go so here's our original gingerbread man and you can see how, like how small he is compared to the one in the oh i'm trying to get the get rid of the glare but look at the difference right so yeah you can absolutely enlarge these and make them fill the space that you need to space here's our snowman he's so cute he's got oh. a really happy face and of course, you know, you can stitch those colors, that scarf and any color you want to coordinate with your decor. And remember earlier, I showed you that gold, uh, that deer and the image we had of him, he was uh, on, he stitched in black, which would, you oh. know, look really good in a masculine application. But in that gold king star, well, that glare is terrible. Um, it, you can really see how it's lovely against a green tree. That would be really nice, really nice. Okay, so how do we get those elements into these plastic ornaments? Well, they do often come with a fairly generous opening, which is good. And of course, it does have a top, you know, that comes with it. And we'll use that to finish it off. And then you're going to purchase some artificial snow. And so I have a cup of that here and I like to use a funnel 
because oh boy this stuff can get all over right sue so we'll just go ahead and use the funnel to put the snow in there and you might have to work it down a little bit you know with i'm using a skewer to kind of keep it uh pushing through that opening would you use yeah, that glitter instead of the oh. artificial snow yeah glitter would be beautiful glitter would be really beautiful it takes a little while to get this going but once we get it in there now i didn't pour out as much snow as i probably would use if this wasn't just kind of a you know its final intention was really for a tree so come on doesn't want to come out do you do a lot of uh christmas create like you know decorating your own ornaments and all of that during the holidays sue yeah absolutely just... yeah that's the most fun i think you can have and you yeah. make them personal and you can make ones for the dogs and yeah you know Aww. i love it i love it are you a one christmas tree person in your house or multiples um one big christmas tree and i have smaller ones like even yeah. for my desk i have a usb one that mm -hmm. you can just plug into your computer and it's all it's Aww, cute. that's cute okay so let's talk about how we're going to hang these mittens in there i have these adorable mittens look at them how cute oh. are they and i stitched them in our variegated thread this is summer berries and you know all of oh. our variegated thread is made up of solid colors in the exquisite line so it's easy to pick coordinating colors for sure and so the mittens are one design here i'll show you um and you in our embroidery tool shed or at your machine you would just mirror image them so that you get two in you know opposing fashions and there's also a cap and of course, oh. here we have the eyelet, here we don't have the eyelet, you know, your choice. So I did go to the machine and um, I tacked these together. So I'm going to bring this really close to the, to the camera. And you can see right there um, is where I tacked it together. Let me see. Let me get my skewer there. Ah. Anyway, that's where I tacked it together. I just used the bar tack stitch on my sewing machine, which is the stitch that you use to attach buttons to a garment. And it's just a satin stitch that doesn't move, right? It doesn't go up and down. It only goes left and right. So that's what I use. I use the pink of the uh, same thread. And, you know, you, nobody will ever see that. Nobody will ever see. It. Okay, so now... I have taken a long length of thread and I made a knot in one end and I threaded both of them through a large eye needle. And then I'm going to take that and loop it through the eyelets. And I'm going to then take the, the needle and put it through the loop of the length of um, thread. And then when I pull this up, it'll stay in place. Now, if this was a real ornament, I would use monofilament thread so that you wouldn't see it. And if I'm gonna put it on a green tree, if you don't have monofilament thread, go ahead and use a green thread because it will blend with the background you know, on the tree. And now we gotta get it in that opening. So we're gonna kind of roll this up. And you know, it's you're not gonna ruin it. So don't be too, worried about it and then we're just going to put that in there and then you'll take your a skewer or you know maybe a pencil and you'll just kind of open that up and try to flatten it out and this takes a little doing you may even want to put it on the bottom and um, take some time to get that to flatten out and it will actually flatten out over time you want to keep your needle and your little topper away from each other because they definitely want to connect. And then once you have it at the right height th that you want it, and maybe you want it to like touch the snow, maybe you want it to be completely freestanding, whatever it is, you decide and then you take a moment. And what I would do probably is then hold this down, maybe get a piece of tape so we know it doesn't move. Let's see if we can get 
some weight on that length and then we'll pull this through so it doesn't move. There we go. And it's a little, little long. Okay. And then you have to squeeze those prongs together so you can get the cap back on. Just work your way. And there you have it. And now I would tie this off, make a nice knot up here. Uh, of course, if, you know, if it's monofilament thread, nobody's going to see it, right? And we'll just tie that off and then clip those thread tails. And there you have it. There's your ornament. Isn't that so cute? Isn't he That's so cute? amazing. I love yeah. it. I know. It's really fun. Now, on the gingerbread man, he's a little bit different. So you may find an ornament that has this string at the top. And that's even easier to attach an ornament to because all you really do then is just take a, a length of monofilament thread and thread it through this cord. And then he just dangles there, trapped forever in there, <laughs> inside. So super easy to do, super easy to do. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Um, Let's see. Studio D65 says, I want to do all these ideas, but maybe next year. Yeah. You know, I do all these ideas for this and I don't get to do them at home <laughs> for my family, but that's okay. Someday, someday. Isn't that so much fun though? It's, they're so easy to make. And, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, kind of coming up with these ideas and then getting them uh, stitched in the hoop and then rinsing away. That's, that's kind of the longest part, right, Sue? It is, but it's also nice. It's nice to watch it come together. Yeah. And the, especially mm -hmm. if you're using the King Star metallic thread, it's just stunning. But yeah. it's it's easier than doing, you know, applique where you have to trim and do everything. Right. You can just sit back and enjoy your machine stitching. Right. And there's no placement to worry about. It uses stitching on stabilizer. So that's simple, right? Couldn't be easier. Couldn't be easier. Couldn't I know a lot of people... Um, are finally starting to take the time and watch their machine stitch. Uh -huh. And freestanding lace is really good to watch because you'll mm -hmm. understand how complicated it is. And mm -hmm. it's amazing that it can um, not have fabric on it. I just love it. Yeah, I will sit and watch fun. it. I know. And so are you going to have time this weekend to do the sew along for the On the House Dime Free project? Always. Absolutely. Always. It's going to be Saturday morning. That is our fun time. So it's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the OML Embroidery YouTube channel. That's great. That, thank you so much. So we really appreciate your support of doing that every month. It's really been a, a you know, a blessing for all of the, the people that download our projects and yet they then go and have you as a partner to teach, you know, to walk through it and watch you stitch it. It's really cool. I do everything live. So if yeah. I make a mistake, mm -hmm. um, I'll show you how to fix it. So, but everything is live. I'll be sewing along. All right. I love that. Yeah. We have absolutely. fun. Yes, you sure do. You sure do. And you know, our friend Reen Wilcoxon, she says she's been crafting up a storm. This is her favorite time of year. And um, I don't blame her. It is a really fun time of year for sure. So, uh, and you know, speaking of Reen, she's having a great big Reen's favorite things, embroidery garden's favorite things. So you can jump over to her website and see when that is. But you know, coming up here, at Dime, we have Ashley Jones, who's coming back on December 5th. Now, that's a Tuesday at 1 o'clock, and she's going to be showing you how you can turn your pet into an embroidery design. It's a really fun, simple-to-use software, and she has been doing a, um, a bang-up job on software success. So do you watch occasionally? Oh, yes, I do. I try not to miss any of them. She is so much fun to listen to. And she answers all the questions and it's yeah. always like super gorgeous yeah. that she does. Yeah, I love yeah. her. It's like a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, it really is like a one-on-one -on -one free lesson with Ashley, which is pretty priceless. And then I'm going to be back. Oh, did I miss? I think I missed a slide. Mm, no, I didn't. Okay. No, we really do need you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like us on Facebook so that we can continue to provide this free education for you. And we hope that you would do that. 
And then um, I'm going to, well, no, Ashley's going to be back. Actually, she's going to do two live sessions next week. On the 5th, she'll be doing um, the software success. And then on the 7th, she'll be here uh, doing Facebook Live between friends. So I hope that you'll come and join her for that too. Um, and, you know, we love seeing what everybody does. Don't you love seeing other people's projects, Sue? I always ask them to put it up because yeah. they will come up with something that, you know, I didn't think of or you didn't think of in different yeah. colors. Absolutely. Right. Oh, we're always so inspired like that. We're always so inspired. And Marina Vitali says, yes, hit the like button too. That means an awful lot to us. We hope that you would do that. Um, we really do appreciate it. And of course, invite your friends always to join our lives because the more the merrier, right, Sue? Uh, 100%. It's free and easy and everyone will learn something. I learn something every time. I it's do fascinating. Too. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what you've been stitching. Those are awesome. Oh, um, they're all free designs, right? Yeah. From um, Dime every week, is it? Every week. Every Thursday, we give a free design and they stay on our website for the entire year. But fair warning, January 1st, they're gone. So you need to take advantage of that now. And you can still get all of 2023's free designs, the On the House programs on our website. You're free to go download that at any time. But please don't come back on January 5th and say, oh, I want those designs because they're going to be gone. They're going back into the vault. And that's that. Right, Sue? Definitely. I have people who email me saying, how do yeah. I get the doors? I'm like, yeah, you're two years yeah. too late. I'm sorry. He right. can't get them. Right. Maybe we'll bring them back someday. Okay, so I know you want to see what this month's project is. Well, I'm wearing them. They're actually earrings, and they're super easy to make. So let's go ahead and take a look at that free design. They're just kind of elegant. They're not real big. They're not part of the charm collection. So it's a little different. You can stitch them in green or red or king star, silver, gold, purple. What are you going to stitch them in, Sue? Gold, I think. Gold. Gold. King yeah. Star. King Star. Yeah. So I, I do know. have some samples here. Well, let's get them under the camera so you can take a look at how pretty they are. We stitched them in white and we stitched them in uh, green. And Ooh. I'm wearing the green ones. And also uh, the gold or yellow. Actually, we didn't use King Star. But isn't that fun? So they're not that big, right? They're really not that big. They look very nice. Make great gifts for the ladies on your gift list. And they're awesome for you. You can stitch as many as you'd like to match garments that you're wearing. And Sue, you, you can show them how to, you know, do multiples in a hoop and color sort and all that kind of fun stuff. But it'll be yes. easy for you. I know everybody's busy. So I wanted to do something easy. They're, I love those. Actually, I really like the white ones. I, I wouldn't think I would, but they yeah. look fantastic. They do um, look really It'll nice. be a lot of fun, and I'll yeah. show everyone how to get rid of all of the stabilizer and how to put the shepherd's hooks in, too. Good, good. So well, I'd like to easy. say a big thank you to Noda Robertson and uh, Gloria Cardoza, my team here at Dime, for helping pull all this stuff together. It looks like, you know, it could be done in a minute, but, you know, there's lots of details. So a shout out to them. And Sue, thank you for coming and joining me today. It's always so nice to spend time with you. Thank you for having me, especially yeah. since I could wear my hat and uh, get yeah. free earrings. I mean, what more could you ask for? Well, I'm looking forward for? to Saturday. 
Yes. Thank It'll you, Sue. Thank and everybody, you. We'll, I'll be back in a couple of weeks, but Ashley will be here next week. So please join us then. And thanks again for joining us and have a busy, happy stitching time in December. We'll see you then in a couple of weeks. Thank you.